working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single. In this video I am machining and fitting new stainless steel bolts to the regulator rod gland fitting and the wet header. A regulator or throttle on a steam locomotive, whether the locomotive be a small one or a full size one, work in much the same way. The valve is inside the boiler and an external rod moves the valve about to let the steam from the boiler to the cylinders. This clip shows the regulator gland fitting on the back head. And originally this gland assembly, which also is the mounting for the main regulator arm, was held to the boiler using plain steel Allen caphead bolts. I've changed them for stainless steel bolts, but I couldn't get any stainless steel Allen caphead bolts in 4BA size, so I had to make my own. The nearest I could get were bolts that were M4. M4 is slightly bigger than 4BA, but it will thread to 4BA using a die like this. When I test the thread on the bolt, using a 4BA nut, it's really perfect all the way down. So I could do them all like this, there are 10 to make in total, but I'm going to make 11, because this one is just a test. So before any engineers write in telling me I'm doing it wrong, this one is just a test. I'm not going to thread it by hand, I'm going to thread it in the lathe, using my new tailstock die holder adapter that I described in a previous video. You will notice that I'm taking very fine cuts on the Allen bolt, as it's only held by the threads in the chuck. So if I start to take heavy cuts on the head of this Allen bolt, it may slip in the chuck and the threads will be damaged. In any case, I'm not going to use this first bolt, this is a test, just to see whether the principle works. If I was a proper engineer, I would probably put a piece of steel bar into the chuck, drill it and tap it 4BA, then tighten each bolt into the 4BA threaded hole before I machine the end of it like this. But, as most of the regular viewers will know, I'm not an engineer, I'm a musician. I've said it many times. So I'm going to do it this way, because as we all know, there are many different ways to do the same job when it comes to engineering and computers and life in general. I'd just like to mention that this is a new carbide tip on the cutting tool. That's why the stainless steel is cutting very nicely and leaving a good finish. I only need to use the micrometer on this first bolt to get it to the right size. After that I will take note of the numbers on the hand wheel and just duplicate this on the rest of them. The bad news is I have to make 10 of these apart from this one that I'm making. Oh no, mass production again. But it's worth it to know that once this job's completed, if ever I need to dismantle the regulator assembly and the wet header at the front of the boiler, the bolts are going to come out without shearing off. Analysing how my brain works, and sometimes it worries me a little bit, but anyway, I don't mind the repetitive process of learning a musical instrument or practising a new piece, but I don't really like the repeat process of machining. I initially intended to shorten these bolt heads slightly by machining across the head like this, and the finish was very nice indeed. And this part of the job became strangely fascinating. Don't ask me why, I think it's because I'm just a bit odd. Anyway, it looked very nice until I tried to put the Allen key in the end, and the Allen key didn't want to go in the end because the burr around the hexagon hole prevented the Allen key from going in there. Apart from machining the end of the bolt, the rest of the operation was a success, so I took bolt number two, put it in the chuck held by its head, and started very carefully turning it down to length. I could have used a hacksaw for this, I could have used my bandsaw and blunted the blade because stainless steel work hardens, what I definitely didn't do was use a parting tool, because it's only held by the head in the chuck, and a parting tool puts far too much side pressure on the bolt, and it would probably have just jumped out of the chuck. With the M4 thread shortened to the correct length, I apply some steam oil, because I use steam oil for thread cutting, unorthodox maybe, but it works, and now I'm using my gadget. This is my die stock adapter that fits in the tail stock, and you can see the principle, I machine the end of it to fit fairly smoothly into the end of a handheld die holder. Then it becomes one unit and provided I hold the entire assembly together with my right hand, it works fine. Just to recap in case you've just tuned in, I'm re-threading an M4 bolt to 4BA and 4BA is more or less the same pitch, maybe not. I'm sure I will get messages from some viewers telling me what the thread pitches are etc etc but it doesn't really matter because it's my only option here. Even though I had a good look around, I couldn't find anywhere where I could get a 4BA Allen caphead bolt that was actually made out of stainless steel. As you can see, I'm threading this by hand. I could thread it under power, but it's a very short distance to travel, so it doesn't take very long to do. So after using my tailstock die holder converter, what do I think about it? Well, it works fine. That was a completely painless exercise, and it's particularly good because I didn't get any pieces of metal in my fingers by putting the die into the tailstock die holder. 
and when I remove the bolt from the chuck and have a close look at it, it's very good indeed. So now, just for a change, I'll make another one. Don't worry, I'm not going to show every one in great detail, but this is the same principle, very fine cuts, holding it by the thread, and this time I'm taking slightly deeper cuts. I'm just pushing the envelope to see what happens. I bought plenty of these small bolts, so if I break a couple, then it's not the end of the world. I received a comment from a woman, by the way, and this woman said she didn't like my jokes, and if I continued with these sort of jokes, she wasn't going to watch the channel anymore. Oh no, a viewer is not going to watch my channel anymore. And when I think about it, you know, I once had a girlfriend like that, and parts of her keep popping up in the acid bath when I put pieces of copper pipe in there. I really think I need to clean it out and remove the teeth. Oh, I'm really sorry, that was a joke. Not a very good joke, not in very good taste, but it was a joke nevertheless. And now, unable to contain my excitement any longer, the machining of the head of this bolt comes to its inevitable conclusion. But as I don't trust hand wheels, I'm checking it with my micrometer, and yes, that's perfectly good. Time to move on to the next bolt. A few viewers, very few viewers, asked me to run things like this in real time, which I have been doing, but now it's time to speed it up a bit. The high point of this clip is at the end. I used a piece of sandpaper to clean up the sharp edge. Often when I run the video at high speed, I see things that I didn't notice at normal speed. In this clip, you can clearly see the shaft of the bolt bending as the tool starts to cut it. That's because stainless steel is quite a soft metal. Well, it is until it work hardens. This is the threading process at 400%. That's four times normal speed. To keep the die concentric with the work, it's important to make sure that this adapter presses onto the back of the die holder at all times. And that's another bolt done. There are only 10 to make. I've lost count of where I am now. For the last part of this machining extravaganza, I'm going into warp speed. And now I can hear the voices starting, but thankfully the job is almost finished. This clip shows four of the bolts, although you can only see two of them, holding the gland assembly, which also supports the regulator, onto the boiler back head. And here's a view of the wet header, taken through the hole where the chimney sits. And all of these bolt heads are machined to exactly the same size, but as you can see, the top two go nearly all the way in, the next two stick out a bit and the bottom two stick out fully. It would suggest to me that all of the holes in the wet header are not counterboard to the same depth. This is not a problem at all though, the main thing is the bolts are never going to rust in place. And I've just realised what RIP stands for. That's it for this one, I can do no more. 10 stainless steel Allen caphead bolts that are threaded 4BA. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.